I work on the science of converting or transforming this landscape into a landscape that behaves more like this, more like a forest. A streetscape that looks more like this for absorbing and treating stormwater. Roofscapes, transforming those into a roofscape that looks like this, again, for absorbing, filtering stormwater. Designing um, biologically active subsurface storage for stormwater ma uh, management systems. So why? Why would you do this? Well, it's fun. It's a lot of fun, actually. But, uh, but why? Well, there's a lot of reasons. One of the primary drivers is that we share this region with some very stunningly powerful creatures, uh, salmon and orca. And uh, some of those animals are at risk of extinction. One of the primary drivers for that risk of extinction, there are several, but one of the primary drivers is urbanization and the flows, the stormwater flows that come off of the urban landscape that has those toxins that uh, Laura just spoke about. So uh, we, we are actually in the midst of kind of a grand experiment in this region. We're one of the only regions in the world, in fact, we may be the only region in the world that has threatened endangered species in a major metropolitan area. Usually that's a wildland issue, not, not an urban issue. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, we've talked about some of the things that are uh, happening around stormwater, some of the transitions and changes, uh, but we're gonna talk a little bit about the science of reinventing the urban landscape. And so one of the first questions that comes to mind, of course, for all of us, is that what do sand, coconuts, and burnt wood have in common? Of course, that's the question you would first ask. Well, as it turns out, these are some materials uh, that, work, uh, that show a lot of promise for developing a perfect stormwater filter. And so we're gonna look at some, some data. And what I'm gonna show you here is uh, a plot on the right. We're gonna focus on the plots that are on the right here. And each one of those colored boxes represents different kinds of filter media media for filtering stormwater to prevent these impacts that we've been talking about to our aquatic organisms. The red box is a bunch of data for, the, uh, for some old media, media that we've been uh, prescribing for a number of years now. And what I want you to focus on are, are those dark lines in the, in the middle of those, or in, in those colored boxes. Those are the median values for, the, uh, for um, removal or capture of dissolved copper in those, in those media. Well, the old, the red box you can see on the left, or uh, on the left of that uh, plot, uh, units and parts per billion on that vertical axis, not working very well for capturing dissolved copper, or holding onto it. But some of the new media, those colored boxes down lower, with that coconut, with that sand, that burnt wood and some other materials, working really well for capturing dissolved copper. Orthophosphorus, another contaminant, particularly uh, damaging to freshwater streams and lakes. Uh, again, the red box, some of the old material we've been working on over the past few years, uh, not performing too well, but some of the new materials we're working with on those colored boxes down low, working really well for capturing orthophosphorus. So what do you do with this stuff, with this media that we work in the, we work in the lab on this stuff, and what do you do with it in the landscape? Well, we deploy it uh, in ultra-urban landscapes like this in Portland, or in residential developments in, in West Seattle to capture and filter the stormwater across the landscape. Permeable, uh, permeable pavements, and I believe you have porous asphalt in your parking lot um, out here <laughs> in the, uh, yes, congratulations. Uh, and uh, we're looking at some porous asphalt right here. Uh, at a research, uh, research station in Puyallup. And you can see up top left there, some uh, impervious asphalt with the shiny, the shiny surface, uh, and then the drier looking porous asphalt. And we've been experimenting with, this, this, with these materials and trying to determine how well do they filter pollutants. So this is, these are materials that uh, water flows readily through the, the surface while allowing you to dry. More data. Uh, what we've been finding is these surfaces can work really well for capturing pollutants. Here we're looking at total suspended solids. And on the left, another bunch of data, a distribution of data, looking at the dirty water coming in to that porous asphalt 
and then quite clean water on those two uh, box plots that are really squished down really small on the right. Very good results for capturing and retaining, filtering sediment. Total copper, same thing. Very dirty water coming in, high concentrations of total copper, very clean water coming out, low concentrations of copper. Motor oil, same thing. Quite uh, high concentrations coming in and quite low concentrations coming out the bottom of that system. Primary reason for that, uh, for that good performance for motor oil, biological degradation. So there's actually uh, microbes living in, there's microbes living in your pavement. I didn't know if anybody told you that, but there's microbes living in your pavement out in that parking lot, degrading hydrocarbons. So what do you do with this perennial pavement that we're, that we're experimenting with and <clears throat> developing these, these, these filters for the stormwater? Well, we're gonna be deploying this perennial pavement across the landscape, just like your parking lot out in, uh, outside here. Uh, residential developments, commercial developments, where we're capturing that stormwater where it falls and filtering it. So we are in the uh, midst of one of the largest transitions in how we think about, design, and build our urban landscape and our cities in decades. We're reintroducing ecology back into our landscape to better manage the water and protect those aquatic organisms that are really icons and uh, something we find in this part of the world very special. Thank you.